Well, I really need to shave. Yep. What's up, YouTube? Jason here with Bite My Bits. I bring to you the short news bits again this week from my computer room. Why? Because I like doing it this way, and so far, you guys have not hated me for it. The first topic on the list, and I also want to say real quick, I do like doing it this way again because I usually talk about more topics. Even though the videos are longer, that's okay. A little bit more long-winded than normal, but that's okay because I feel like I can talk about more and get away with it easily. So, first topic today. It's this countdown, which has been decoded to come from NVIDIA. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is just kind of released. This is Monday. I'm recording this on Monday. Uh, Paul from Paul's Hardware actually did an unboxing of one of these little pieces that came in the mail. And basically, it leads to a website. This website takes codes to unlock. There's multiple codes that you have to unlock in order to complete the puzzle. And then you have ultimately the resolution or the decoded message takes you to this domain name. Now this domain name is basically counting down to somewhere around noon on this Friday the 6th of May. The conclusion so far is that it's coming from Nvidia and it's going to revolve around their new GPU release. Not entirely too sure but it is a countdown to something and I thought it was an interesting PR move on their part in order to you know get the public height that sort of thing. So kind of interesting. Go check out Paul at Paul's Hardware. He can uh, do this little unboxing for you and he kind of walk through what it is. Definitely kind of interesting. Moving on. Next step up, this is the uh, this is basically a story about a child sex abuser or a potential child sex abuser that has been locked up for 7 months uh, in solitary confinement because he has refused to unlock a hard drive. Now, this is kind of one of those subjects where I feel is almost just topic worthy, just just to talk about you know back and forth from people because, on one end you have you know child sex abusers or terrorists or whatever you know awful things people could do that you don't want to protect with you know encryption. You want those people to be exposed for what they are. But on the other end, it's like you have your own privacy. You have the right to encrypt your own data. I mean, this is these are the things you have the right to do. You, you there's a uh, you have the right to not inc incriminate yourself. So giving your password to your own encrypted data could incriminate yourself. So you get something like this and it's like you're riding on that little fine line of, you know, should you push them to unlock it or should you not? And that's an interesting topic. However, what really gripes me is that this is what they used to lock this guy up is basically a law from the 1789 known as the All Rights Act, which is the same law that the FBI, the FBI called on in order to compel Apple to unlock their iPhone, even though nothing came of that. In fact, they paid like a million dollars to get it unlocked overseas and found that it had nothing to offer. Kind of funny. The point is that this guy is locked up in solitary confinement solely for the reason that he has not unlocked his hard drive. Now, I know he's accused of being a child sex abuser, maybe having pornography, and it's probably true. I mean, otherwise he'd unlock it. That's my thought anyways, along with many others. But technically, he's not convicted of anything. All he is, is he is only suspected of having child pornography. So they're locking away, and I use this term loosely, an innocent man in order to force him to unlock his hard drive because he's not guilty yet. Okay, we live in a society where you're you're innocent until proven guilty. So this grinds my gears completely because we have locked him up based off of a 17, 1708 or 1789 law just because we can. Pretty shitty. Next up, we have the war on ads. This is Block IQ. This is basically an ad war going between people who use ad block and people who want to serve ads. I am an avid user of Adblock. I use Adblock. I'll just say it right now. I basically cannot surf the web without Adblock. I cannot do it. I can turn it off for key places like you know YouTube or a few places that I search that I want to support with the ads because I can deal with their ads. They're ads that are not invasive. They're not going to pop up, take over the screen, basically ruin your entire browsing experience. No. They just have ads somewhere on the screen. Now you've probably run across the website that actually detected your ad block and it's caught, popped up and said something like, oh, it looks like you're running ad, uh, ad block or this hurts our community and it costs us money and blah, 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 blah. And it basically educates you on why they need ads. That's not a bad thing and it's completely understandable. But this new system that they're, this Block IQ owned by Ad Supply recently merged with Adaptive Medias has launched Block Bypass. Basically, the software is going to detect users of popular ad block programs such as Adblock Plus or whatever I use. I forgot what I use. 
uBlock Origin. And basically it's going to be configurable to whoever owns or licenses the software. The software can either uh, educate people as to why they should not be running AdBlock on their website. They can refuse to serve content completely to the visitor, or they even have an option to bypass the AdBlock. And I've, I, I think I've actually ran across this before. There's been some websites that you can't block uh, an ad because they use a randomly generated div or a code or something that you can block that one particular ad for that visit, but as soon as you refresh the page, it's another random code. And there's no way for the ad blocker to actually distinguish what is the ad and what is not because it's not a static ad. So that's your options basically to completely circumvent the entire ad blocking experience, refuse to serve them media at all, or just you know gracefully educate them on the situation. So. This is gonna be an interesting cat and mouse game to kind of keep an eye on. I do honestly think that there's gonna be one of those things where most websites are going to circumvent you know, the ad blocking completely, which sucks. And if they do that, I definitely wanna see better ad blockers come up because I hate ads because they are intrusive. They pop up, they take over screens, they flash, they play sounds. That's why I hate ads. I hate ads so much when I'm trying to watch something or when I'm trying to read a simple news article and I have to fight against five different pop-ups and I have to hunt down a stupid little video playing somewhere on the screen that's playing sound and I don't know where it is. That annoys the shit out of me and I don't want to deal with it, which is why I have ad block. On top of all that, some ads serve you malware. That pisses me off and even bigger companies I, oh i forgot there was a news website i think it was forbes i think i think it was forbes i could be wrong some news agency they started blocking people completely from visiting their website if they were running ad blocker and i know forbes does that i just don't know if this story is about forbes but then when people disabled the ad blocker they went to that website and they were served malware from the ads is it forbes fault no it is not forbes fault it is the people who bought or control the ads that forbes purchased or is being sold. But the point is still that they can be malicious. So this cat and mouse game is gonna be interesting to watch. Next up we have, <laughs> this is kind of more of like a what the fuck type of thing, but the city of, and I probably should have read more of this, it's somewhere in Germany, Augsburg, Germany. They have installed special traffic lights that were actually meant for people staring at their phones. That's right, we've come to a, a crossroad in our society where we need traffic lights for people who do not want to look up from their phone. That's basically right here in the in the street. That way they can see it when they sit their nose down in their damn phone. It's retarded. Okay, if you need special traffic lights to not die, then you're retarded. I'm sorry. If you die because you did not look up from your phone and you got hit by a fucking train, it's called natural selection. Next story, Hulu. They are actually looking at, in 2017, offering live TV as part of a subscription service. They're saying that's this, that this live TV is going to cost somewhere around $40 a month, possibly roughly $40 a month. This is still pretty cool because it's going to offer the live TV subscription option via the internet, and they are also saying that it's going to give you some sort of a DVR feature playback to where you can go back and watch previously recorded videos from Hulu. So. It pretty much make, makes cutting the cord way easier. And what's even cooler is because Walt Disney and 21 Century Fox are co-owners of Hulu. So they're already on board to offer things like the Disney Channel, Fox, FX, things like that. So that's pretty cool. Comcast is also apparently part owner of Hulu, but they haven't jumped on board. So it's going to be interesting to see if that unfolds. Definitely something worth looking into when it comes out just to see how reliable and good it is. But then again, $40 a month, I mean, you can basically get a basic package for $40 a month from your cable provider. So it kind of makes you wonder, is it really worth it? And now, news from Microsoft. Microsoft is now blocking, changing your default search engine from Microsoft Bing to something like, oh, I don't know, Google. And they are also blocking extra browsers from displaying those search results if you use Cortana. Now the reasons behind this, saying that they can't integrate it well with all the search engines or they want to keep a static experience between all of their users, and you know what, you know that argument is kind of understandable. However, it's bullshit. It's complete bullshit. Basically Microsoft is losing the search war again. Microsoft Edge is failing again. 
What I really wanna see is somebody who makes a software package that allows you to circumvent this on your desktop if you actually use Cortana, Cortana. Yes, I was forced into Windows 10. No, I do not use Cortana. In fact, I have basically almost every single Microsoft IP address blocked. I cannot even access Bing. I'm not even lying. I cannot access Bing, seriously. You've probably seen this before. It was kind of all over Twitter and it's been on a couple news stations, but basically the Microsoft upgrade window popping up when this nice little lady was trying to give the weather. Not really much news story or newsworthy, but it is kind of funny because reasons. Moving on with Microsoft, Microsoft is experimenting with DNA storage. I actually covered DNA storage a couple episodes back, or one or two episodes back, basically where they can store just a massive amount of data on a DNA strand, and they're able to put, you know, let's see, they're, they're basically saying 1001 billion terabytes worth of data in a single gram of DNA. So that's kind of interesting that somebody as big as Microsoft is trying to pick this up in order to develop this technology to make a mass storage option available commercially. And then, hey, who knows, potentially to consumers. That's probably going to be decades down the line, but it is interesting to see somebody as big as Microsoft picking this up. Anyways, one last Microsoft topic today is not really Microsoft, it's actually more of a Google, but it does kind of poke at Microsoft. Google Chrome is sneaking past or has snuck past Internet Explorer for being the top browser, which believe it or not, even if you use Chrome or any other Firefox or whatever, even if you use that and you think, well, that's stupid. Everybody uses that. Well, who uses Internet Explorer? Lots of people use Internet Explorer. Lots of people. It's default. People just do not know that they can switch to a better browsing experience. They don't know this. They just browse the Internet. They get on eBay. They get on Facebook. They have no idea. If you're using Internet Explorer, please stop doing that. It's bad for your health. I have read somewhere that Internet Explorer causes cancer. Yes, it does. It causes cancer in the eyes. It makes it go blind. It's not even a joke. It really does. Look it up. Moving on. Seagate. They're now shipping a 10 terabyte, seven platter, helium filled hard drive. Holy shit. That is so much data. Now, this is kind of a, a win-lose for me. But basically, I don't like Seagate. And I don't like Seagate, not because I'm biased, you know, like, oh, Western Digital all the way, bro. No, I don't like Seagate because I've had multiple Seagate drives fell on me. And because they have felt on me so many times, I'm talking like five or six, I have not given them another chance. Now, I don't know if their new drives were as unreliable as their older drives, but I've had multiple Seagate drives fell on me. I've only had one Western Digital hard drive fell on me, and that was an old 500 gigabyte. 500 gigabyte hard drive that I probably had over 10 years ago. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty damn old and it finally gave out. So with that said, this is interesting because they use seven platters. They're, I, I don't know if you're familiar with helium, the reason why they put helium in drives, but basically helium offers less resistance for the splitting, the, the splitting, <laughs> the spinning platters. Because there's less resistance, they can put more platters in there, make it condense more, write, you know, obviously write and read more data because there's more platters in there. And that's why helium is better than air, because air causes more friction and things start overheating and going wrong. The standard drive is going to give you, I think the Western Digital Red 6 terabytes are five. I'm going to say five platters. And I think Western Digital has an eight terabyte hard drive that is six platters. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong, but I think it's six platters for their top end. So this is adding an additional seventh or seventh disc, filling it with helium and being 10 terabytes. That is absolutely insane. Of course, this is going to be enterprise grade. It's going to be something that's going to be super expensive because of how much data you can store in one little package. But having the technology released to enterprise is a cool thing because that means sooner or later it's going to trickle down into the consumer area. So I'm definitely excited for this. Now I just have to work myself up to actually trying Seagate again or waiting until I see more reviews or extended use um, data coming from Seagate before I actually make the jump back over to Seagate. Let me know in the comments, guys, what kind of hard drives do you use for storage? Personally, I use Western Digital Reds, which from what I've heard are risky out of the box, but they last for a long time, as long as they make it past two weeks. I have nine of them, eight of them, nine of them, I have a bunch of them and none of them have filled out of the box and all of them have been running strong. So 
I'm gonna stick with Western Digital Red for right now, but let me know what you use. The last story of the day is for all you Star Trek fans out there. Paramount Pictures, they basically registered Star Trek for uh, today, I don't know if this was today or not, May 2nd. Yes, yeah, so they registered to it today as a name. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to come out or going to be made into a movie. What this means is that the new Star Trek movie coming out this summer, Star Trek Beyond, if that does really well, then they might consider making another movie. So for all you Trekkie fans out there, definitely good news. Hey, but wait, there's more. They also, CBS TV Studios tweeted on May 2nd, this just in, a new Star Trek TV series will set course for Toronto and begin filming this fall. Yes. I gotta admit, I'm a Trekkie, okay? I love my Star Trek. Can't wait. That's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe below. Follow me on Twitter to underscore bite my bits. And have a good day.